Last week we finished up our talk of Greece and then we went to Cyprus afterwards. We started our Cyprus trip out in Larnaca. It's the easiest place to fly into. It's a cool city and there's a lot of cool things around there. And actually next week we're gonna be doing a video on some of the best day trips from Larnaca, so stay tuned for that. But today we wanted to talk about our favorite. Yeah. Kiro Kitia is amazing. I don't think I've ever been to somewhere that's this old with monumental architecture. You guys are in for a treat, a treat that even inspired and surprised me. As we walked into the site, I was already getting excited. There was this section of reconstructed houses and they're supposed to be like 11,000 years old, but they were so much more impressive than I ever expected. So you're talking about the end of the last stone age and they're really still just using bone and stone tools. And the technology is about the same as our paleo hunters would have been using that time in uh, the Americas. But our paleo hunters were never building things like this. This is a really advanced civilization for that time. So they used ethno archaeology to actually figure out uh, that they had used trees to make roofs on these. And then they had to come up with an idea of how to rebuild them from what being found like this or actually even less preserved than this. But one thing they do a good job of here is kind of showing you the process that they went through when they rebuilt it because they've got like four or five different structures here in different states of archaeological preservation or restoration and so you start by building up the walls although that one has got a bunch of signs and the walls get taller and taller and you come up with the structure that uh, would have held the roof here and you can really see that well in this one where they come across with like a cross thatch and then plaster i suppose on top of that because i doubt they do rocks and plaster so yeah you can see here that they would just do like a mud dobbled plaster roof on top of it and then eventually you get structures like these and i really like experimental archaeology and i really like what they've done here and i think it's probably relatively accurate can you imagine not having ceramic technology yet and somehow you're building structures like this? Kind of out of this world. And so we kind of took our time and we walked around the entire site. It's really not that big of a site, but we were looking here and there and we found this really cool thing on the ground. So this is just laying here and the circular shape is what really drew my attention and you pull it up and it's definitely an artifact. This was definitely human worked and it's something with plaster. Um, I can't tell you exactly what it was used for, but this is the same type of plaster that was there. Um, and it's just like laying here. I'm used to seeing ceramics laying around in these piles of debris and, but this is right out in the middle of the walkway and by that shape I guarantee that's artifactual and it's pretty dang neat and it's going right back where it belongs next to that area was a couple of different trails you could either go up the hill which looks like there was some ruins up there or you could go on this back trail that kind of took you around the mountain up to the top and that's called the archaeological trail and Obviously, just because of its name, we had to go on the archaeological trail. Just outside of where it's protected here, there's a bunch of terraces showing that they farmed way back. And those may have been Neolithic, 
but I think the cave that you see up on the top there where it's carved out, that may be Paleolithic or even earlier. Makes me wonder if there's any cave art or anything up in there, but not gonna break the rules and go over there, at least not yet. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, we kept walking a little bit and then we came across a really old cave like that one and we got to get a really close look at it, which was awesome. So you can definitely tell that this was a habitation and it was a habitation pretty early. Um, you've got burn marks here. So they would have set up their fire. I don't know what's pushed up in here. I'm assuming they've done some archeology span in here, but there's really no evidence of that because there's rocks still in situ here that haven't been cleared away. I would wonder since they bury people inside their houses, did they bury people inside of their caves? And I'd like to see, and I'll probably go home and do a little research on whether they did that. I was hoping to see like some preliminary little like art, even like hand prints, but I'm not seeing that anywhere in here. Um, and of course no ceramics because they didn't have ceramics. Maybe. I don't know. There's probably something cool under here, man. Some people have been walking around in here before us. But this cave is pretty daggum awesome. And definitely the precursor to the settlement out there. So what are we looking at? Maybe 12,000, 13,000 years ago, the first people moved in here. Probably. And they just like camped in caves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Cool to be near this old history, man. It's amazing. They still allow you to come in here. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Yeah. I'm super surprised that you don't see any evidence of archaeology yet. There's not even really scrapes on the rocks. Yeah. Like they were trying to clear anything away. And eventually the people of Kirokitia did move out of the caves and it was time for us to move out of the cave and go see the main site. So right here, the wall ran originally, and when they didn't feel like they needed the wall anymore, why waste the building materials? So they went and repurposed it on some of the stuff that we see outside of the wall. But you can tell when they were concerned about security, they were packed in here pretty darn tight. And uh, it was like Neolithic zero lot line development. Kirokitia is a UNESCO site, and you know how we love UNESCO sites. It's one of the most important sites in the southeastern Mediterranean, and it's probably because it's a Neolithic site, which means it dates back like 11,000 years ago. And it's really cool. It was uh, not as large of a site as I thought, but it was really compacted. Right, yeah, there was only like 300 to 600 people, they think, at any given time here. They farmed on the outside, so they did some farming and they did some pastoral, you know, they had cattle or things like that. Um, and that's what got them settled into this area. And they had all these circular buildings that we've seen. And even inside of those, they would usually have burials. People would be buried in like a crouching position below the floor, which is kind of cool. And there was a lot of burials because their average lifespan was only 22 years old. As a matter of fact, for somebody to get to be my age, they would have been like what we think of as like the 103 year old who lives in the blue zone or whatever. And lucky for us, we don't have those type of problems and we can go over there at 40 some years old and visit it and they've been reconstructing the wall and they're doing a lot of that archaeology that they set aside right now. So here you can see where the wall used to be and either their comfort level changed or some conditions changed and it forced them outside of where the wall once was. And you see all these little houses here now. There seems to have been a moving in and moving out from where the walls are. And so there are earlier settlements out here and then everyone moves inside of the wall 
and then eventually they all move back out and you can see that there are lower structures that were smaller that seem to be the earlier ones and then you've got this larger circle that would have come and been sat on top of where the old building was eventually and it looks to be by trying to measure the arc here, it looks to be about 150% of the size of the other one. So maybe they got better at their roofing material over the course of a thousand or 1500 years. And the site only takes like a couple of hours for you to really get in there and get a feel for it, but it is worth every minute and you will enjoy it, I guarantee it. For the casual tourist who's not that into history, this site might not be that interesting, but just the fact that it is over 11,000 years old is amazing. I mean, you look at the stuff in America and they were all hunter gatherers. They didn't really have settlements and just to see the difference in technology is incredible. And I never thought I would even see settlements this old. So that alone is amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys like stuff like this, follow, subscribe below, and find yourself on the journey.